Personal log, 31770865. My name is Taylor, Sebastian Taylor. I had a brother, Lennon. My little sister and mother are still among the living and a deadbeat who knows where. My little sister is still kind of young, so she calls our brother Lemon. Yeah, Lemon, like the fruit. I joined the military when I was 18. I went into the core, and them yellow footprints will forever be burned in the back of my eyes. After my first two tours, my mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer, so I went back home to take care of the family. I've been here for about a few years now. No wife, no kids, just a dog named Grayson. That was until our home, our world, came to the brink of destruction. What happened, you ask? The fucking world went to shit, and it got my brother killed in the process. There are these theories everywhere saying that the world was angry at us because we poisoned the skies, global warming and such. But whatever the reason, Mother Nature didn't like it, and she decided to fight back. Random earthquakes started happening in places earthquakes never did before. 100 year old volcanoes that lie dormant started to erupt daily. Hurricanes in Europe and tsunamis destroying cities past the mainland. Well, you get the picture. Entire countries wiped out overnight and there was nothing that anyone could do. I look outside, even now, and all I can see is chaos. Riots on the streets, buildings burned, no plants, no birds, just darkness. I don't even remember the last time I seen the sun. We fight for our lives every single day. But what does it matter anymore? We just keep fighting and fighting and fighting. But it wasn't always like this. I was told that our people once lived in a beautiful area in the Midwest United States, Arclay County to be exact. I seen pictures of our home, the one my grandparents grew up in. My grandfather was a mischievous boy, always getting into trouble. And my grandmother was the daughter of one of the maids. They were best friends who later married and raised my mother. The house was a white colonial with pillars in the front, only 12 acres of land. Big, but not too excessive like all of the homes around us. Just enough space for us and the caretakers. We had a farmhouse on the property as well, but we didn't own a farm. And there was a stream that cut through the property. It ran vast, yet very quiet. After the world turned on us, we couldn't stay at our home. It wasn't safe, so we went to the city seeking refuge. But we found something else. There were these flyers talking about space travel, promising a better life in another world. When all of the chaos and destruction started, the governments of the world realized that we can't stay here. And one thing that everyone agreed on is that we have to leave Earth or we will die. So they formed this group called the Enoch Colonization Authority, or ECA for short. It's supposed to be a last ditch effort to preserve humanity to a distant Earth-like planet they called Enoch. It's said to be the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Talk about taking a page out of the Bible, right? The ECA said Enoch was a place where man can rebuild and have a real future. Truth be told, they'll probably fuck it up like they did Earth. But it was our only hope for survival. And we, my brother and I, had to go back home because we needed something. We needed a piece of our home to bring with us so that we wouldn't forget where we came from. So that our family wouldn't forget where we came from. So we decided to sneak out and went back home one last time to grab my grandmother's hand-knit teddy bear that my little sister had dropped on our way out. It was about two hours walking distance, but we couldn't be seen by the rioters, so we had to leave at night. When we got there, we approached our land from the south in order not to be seen. When we got to our house, no one was around. Our home and the farmhouse were raided and reduced to rubble. Looters took everything and burned it all down. Some parts of our home were still even burning, but what was even worse is that we've seen chains where the doors were, nails in the windowsills, coffins laying in the front yard. People died in our home who were trying to seek refuge and were tortured and burned to death. 
It was a massacre. No one survived. And realizing what had happened, my brother and I had to get back to my little sister and mother. As we were leaving, we decided to go a different way from the way that we came. If someone was following us, hopefully this would throw them off, so we went towards the stream. It's amazing that after everything going on in this world, all the destruction, all the riots, all of the chaos, this stream was the only thing that survived. When we got close to it, we had seen a little figure on the bridge, so we had to get closer to see what it was. It was the fucking bear. What are the odds? But wait, why was it out here? Before I could stop him, my brother made a break for it. When he got to the bear, everything was quiet. No insects, no birds, no sounds, just the stream. Then he said, Sebastian, I got it. And then you hear, and I got you. My brother was shot through the chest with an arrow and fell into the stream. Not knowing who they are or how many of them they were, I ran and jumped into the stream after my brother. As I was running, guns were going off and I can hear arrows flying through the air. Adrenaline kicked in so I didn't feel that I got shot in my left torso. I swam until I could reach my brother and then the stream washed us away. I felt the pain shortly thereafter. My brother, still alive, was in shock gripping the bear as tight as he could so he wouldn't lose it. We washed up in the riverbanks a few miles downstream. As he looked at the moon, my brother said, there's an entire world out there. Don't waste it. Then he was gone. Luckily, I was able to find a car with the key still in the visor and was able to drive back the rest of the way. I broke the arrow and put my brother in the back seat. When I got back, my little sister and mom seen me coming through the gates. I got out the car, both my mother and sister crying for different reasons. My little sister happy seeing that I got the bear, and my mother noticing that my brother wasn't walking next to me. Then my little sister asked, Mommy, where's Lemon? I looked at my mother, she looked at me, then my head went down. My mother trying her hardest to hold back her tears and smiling, looking at my little sister and said, Lemon is in a better place. My little sister, oblivious to what that meant, was like, okay. Later that night, I told my mother everything. She cried for a little, then wiped her tears and said that we were going to live up to Lennon's wishes and make this new world a better place for us to call home. We had my brother cremated the next day because we refused to bury him on this world that is destroying itself. The ECA has this program, this Outriders program. Outriders are supposed to be the ones that make the difference. So, for Lennon, I'm going. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.